welcome to this week's episode of Barefoot Sail and Dive. So this week we've tried to decide what jobs need to be done now before we can move this boat a thousand nautical miles. There's certain things that can be, that have to be done um, for structural, for the engines and that sort of stuff. So we're going to get those done, but cosmetic wise, we've got to put that on the back burner and we'll come back to that in later episodes. Okay, babe, can we explain to everyone <laughs> what we are up to at the moment? Um, we've just ordered a load of stuff off of Amazon. Um, Amazon is still delivering here to the marina. Everyone else keeps getting packages daily. So we decided to finally order online, stop waiting for West Marine to open. So we actually went to West Marine today and shocker, they were closed. And they, they were supposed to be open. They were supposed to be open. We've called the corporate office and they even said they were supposed to be open, but they're not. So. So Amazon. now we've spent a few thousand dollars on Amazon and we're going to sit here basically for another month waiting for packages. <laughs> but we have nowhere else to go. So at the end of the day... Covid-19 lockdown, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. All you're right. Welcome. Who, what's his name? Jeff. Jeff. You're <laughs> welcome, Jeff. <laughs> so as you know from the previous episodes, we don't have a full rig on this boat. We do just have this little stumpy half a mast. The previous owner, I believe, put this half a mast up thinking that we can fly a spinnaker uh, for some downwind sailing. I'm not 100% sure at this point if that's going to be the case with downwind sailing. I think, to be honest, I'm planning on a thousand mile motor with this boat. So we're going to be using the engines. Uh, obviously, that's going to make a big difference on the amount of fuel that we've got because we don't have the range to do a thousand miles. We have a 55 gallon diesel tank on board. Um, so we're going to need to times that by three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some oil drums, uh, the 200 liter 55 gallon oil drums, the plastic ones. I'm going to get them filled up and I'm going to put them in the cockpit and strap them into place. So as we're using fuel, we can siphon that into the tank. <laughs> Wondering how much noise Eric is going to make while I'm trying to film this section. <laughs> Why? She's cooking breakfast! See, look, bacon. This is all she cares about. She doesn't care about you YouTube people. She just wants bacon. We're making muffins. Stop. All right. So Erica is now banished to be silent in the corner. All right, guys. So one of the points I talked about was the electronic side of things. So sorry. Someone was getting cranky and needed food, so she's made herself two huge muffins. Okay, I think one of them's mine, but it's not very safe because if it's on the same plate, that means she might end up stealing it. So I might have to move it onto my own plate. So one of the big parts of uh, preparing this boat uh, for passage is uh, the electronics. Um, this is how the nav station is looking at the moment, which is actually pretty good. Um, if you remember back to a clip before, um, here in the nav station, most of these wires were not connected um, when I got here. So I've got a load of loose wires, I don't know where they go. There is a lot of trace wires, fortunately, um, trace numbers and stuff, so I'm gonna be able to find my way around. Um, but just so you know, this is what the what the nav station looks like at the moment. So one of the big points of having this boat ready for passage is the electronic system. So the navigation systems at the moment, as in the nav desk itself, um, we have done some updates here. So I've cut in just a piece of uh, starboard and I've added a lot of new electronics. So there's a lot of new switches here. Uh, we've got our bilge pump operations. We have also invested in a new VHF which has AIS. Um, we have the controls for the master vault which is a new cha battery charger that we've put on board. Um, at the top here you'll notice that there is a big hole. Uh, the big hole is for the Garmin navigation screen, the GPS. Unfortunately that doesn't work. Hey Andy, what we got here? What you've been waiting for forever. Thank you, sir. I believe that is the uh, steering cable. You are a diamond. So does that mean you actually be able to go somewhere? We should be able to steer the boat now. Thank you very much. All right. Been a great help. Thank you, Andy. Take care. All righty. So the steering system, guys, we do have some issues with the steering system. Two of them, in fact. So on the port side, this rudder is seized. So inside the rudder stock here, the bearings at the bottom, it's seized. That's one issue we have, but I'm not too worried. I'm quite happy to maneuver the boat on one rudder. We also have the two engines, so for any tight maneuvering, we can use the engines rather than the steering anyway. But my next issue was the steering cable. Excuse my lovely drawings, by the way. This is the helm. 
Okay, so the steering cable, which is seized, but we've now managed to source another one. We're ready to install it here today. Um, connects to the starboard side rudder, which is all fine and well if we're just gonna use one rudder and use the helm to steer. But we do not wanna do a thousand miles hand steering, two hours on, two hours off. We've tried it before, it's not fun without an autopilot. The autopilot controls are actually on the port side so this is the hydraulic ram for the uh, autopilot and there's a sensor, a rudder sensor telling you the position of the rudder. There is a cross member here which links the two together. So for me to have the autopilot running, I need to also connect the cross beam here so that the autopilot turns the rudder and also the steering cable turns the rudder. So I've come up with an idea. And what I'm going to do is just at this junction here at the top of the rudder post, I am going to disconnect it. So if you turn the starboard rudder, it will literally just turn a pivot here on the top. It will not try to turn or force the port side rudder. It will simply turn at the top. I am going to make a small bushing to go here. As when I disconnect this, this pin or this bolt, I don't want it to drop down or snag or get uh, slightly misaligned. So I'm gonna make a fiberglass tube which goes around there and supports it. Um, that's something we're gonna get back to. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna show that today. So this is in the starboard side. Um, this is our rudder stock, okay? And this is the cross beam that goes across to the port side. Now you can see on this side, I can move it nice and easy. It's nice and free, I can move it by hand. Just in here is where the new cable is going to connect. So that will come in here, be connected here, which will move the rudder from left to right with hand steering. Now I need to leave this bar connected so that the autopilot can be run from the port side to this side. Let's jump across to the port side. So here on the port side, you see this is the cross member that joins the two rudder posts together. Now unfortunately, this is the rudder that's completely seized. So what I'm going to do, you see, I can't really move it. Fortunately, it is stuck in a straight position, so it's like holding the helm, if you will, in a straight line. Uh, we should be able to steer quite well off of just the one rudder on the other side. If it was seized out to the side, that would be a different matter and we'd have to try and, try and align it. You can see here connected, this is the sensor, which senses which position the rudders are in. And this here is our autopilot, okay? It's hydraulic and it comes out, electronic and hydraulic, and it comes out and it connects up here. So what I wanna do is connect this rudder post back on here connect the autopilot back on here and I'm going to loosen these nuts here so that means this will fr spin freely of the actual rudder post itself so there won't actually be any any tension or friction from the seized rudder this bolt here goes all the way through the rudder post so I'm not when I'm undoing those bolts at the top I'm not actually going to have any issues with the rudder dropping out and losing it this is a section here that I'm concerned about that when I take the bolts out and loosen it all up this might want to sink down so what I'm going to do is make like a collar or a bushing that goes in here. I may make something up out of fiberglass or maybe I can find some PVC or something laying around. That's a job for another day, not today. Okay, so you may recall in the last episode we talked about the two engines just briefly. They're both running really nicely. We've checked, uh, checked lots of stuff on them. I do want to replace two belts, uh, just waiting to get those. Um, and also we did mention on the starboard engine that, that we didn't have raw water flow. I have now fixed that. So here on the back of the Yamaha 30s, not sure how dark it is, uh, but you've got the water pump. This is the water pump, raw water pump. Now I've taken that apart. A uh, previous owner told me it had a rebuilt kit done on it, a new impeller and that sort of stuff, but he wasn't getting raw water flow. Um, I have taken it apart, had a look, and it all looked good. So I put it back together, still no flow started checking all my pipes maybe something's blocked and then started to work my way back by taking the hose off while running the uh, running the impeller in there um, and I still wasn't getting raw water so there wasn't any blockage throughout the heat exchanger or something like that so what I've then done is taken the water pump off again had a look and actually it was a quite a hidden fault even though it was a new um, impeller was that the metal part inside was spinning but the actual rubber blades they weren't so that uh, adhesion between the uh, the metal ring in the inside and the outside with the rubber had failed so pretty simple we put in a new impeller and there we go raw water flow so we got the C's rudder shaft on this side the port side and coming out of the bottom of it it's like this it's kind of like someone siliconed it up I don't know it's a really it's silicon look at it that's like a seal around, 
I don't know what someone's done on this side. I don't know what it is. I just want water in my eyes. I can't see. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But anyway, I really, that's really weird. But everything else looks pretty good underwater. Give me a scrubbing pad. Maybe I'll do a little bit now. How's it going? I need a snorkel that doesn't take on water and a mask that fits my head. <laughs> Those ones don't work? Install it. Woohoo! Package number one. Okay, so this morning's mission is going to be connecting up the uh, the new cable we've got for the steering. So yesterday we did manage to drag the cable through, big heavy cable, so we didn't actually film it because there was two of us trying to get a 17 foot cable from the engine room through round the fuel tank and back up uh, to behind the helm station. So we've, we have managed to get that one in, it wasn't much fun. Luckily we did, when we pulled the old one out, we did put a, like a cord, like a piece of paracord. So at least I had a route to follow, so we could push and pull and push and pull, but we had no one to hold the camera. Anyway, that part's in, but today I'm gonna show you connecting it up down in the engine room itself. So I've got all my tools out, ready to go down there, bolt it together. Erica's gonna do a little bit of editing this morning, and then she was gonna hit up a bit of yoga. So uh, let's see how this day goes. So there we have it, basically a special made washer. So this will now be the spacer to go in between the steering to stop the steering arm dropping down. So it'll still be in line with uh, with everything else. So the autopilot will still be able to work, but that seized rudder, it will be uh, independently just seized, but not connected to anything. It's windy, very windy. Which way? We're all good? Turn it! that there yeah when you've been pulling it's that's supposed to be straight I didn't know that what is that there's a connection for all the garment electronics so could be that when we pull the other cable through maybe we damage that in there we'll find out can we fix it no but not I'm gonna go and check to see if there's any power on the screens for the autopilot.
Nothing. Are you sure you turned on the right one? So the autopilot, I didn't break anything. It wasn't my fault that that thing went sideways. That wasn't the problem. I figured it out. She did it... actually bend that pin, yeah, but, but it wasn't, that wasn't the cause of the autopilot not working. I found I'll the issue. It was actually a fuse that was di had died. So It was a fuse holder. Yeah. yeah, fuse holder, and you found it, we traced yeah. it back, and you, I was able you to did fix it. fix it. You fixed it, yes. Ah. Go girl power. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for watching this week's episode, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are so close to 10,000 subscribers, so if you haven't hit that red button, Please hit it, subscribe. Subscribe and use the alarm bell so that you get notifications when uh, when we put another video up. And it's pretty much every Friday. That's why we're trying to do it these days. Exactly, am I going into it? Yeah, but what's what was the next point of this? I, I've got what you're saying, but let's let's go to the intro. Yeah, right there. You have a hair coming out of your nose. They're not going to see it on the camera. Like right here. Subscribe <laughs> 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 to Hey, Why did right. you stick your thumb up? That's probably fine, but where did you go?